about grilling. It's summertime. Why not? We're streaming live from the Winston YMCA Teaching Kitchen. My name is Mary Beth Torres. I am a registered dietitian with Baptist Health, and I'm with my coworker Ann Powers, who's also a uh, dietitian coach with our on our team um, with Baptist Health as well. So we're going to really kind of focus on the grilling techniques, and we're going to really do a lot of cooking demonstrations today on a different variety of things. But we love summer. I love summer because I think that's where you get the freshest ingredients. We're going to go really simple so it's easy for everyone to be able to make something fast and easy with their busy lifestyle, right? Right. So I'm going to be making a chicken kebab. Um, I'm going to do a quick little cucumber um, and tomato salad. And then we're going to be throwing some fruit on the grill as well and some tips and tricks on with some corn. What are you making today? And I'm going to do beef uh, kebabs. I'm using top sirloin today. And then I'm going to do a orzo salad with lemon and feta. Awesome. So as we're going through our cooking demonstration and tips and tricks, don't forget to add some comments or questions um, in the feed box. And as we're doing some demonstration, we'll kind of keep on going back over there and kind of check in and see if we can ask answers any questions for you. So, First of all, I think because we need to prep for our grill, um, we're going to do the kebabs first. And so my chicken kebabs are really simple. I actually just use regular chicken breasts, cut them up in really small pieces. And then I use a Turkish marinade that comes in a little pouch. It's a 15-minute marinade. Can't go wrong because most marinades require how many? Like two hours, two hours. overnight. Um, exactly. Nice. So that's what I'm going to do today is really quick, and I'm going to start assembling mine. Which and then, I, like I said, I'm using top sirloin cut. And I go very simple, mainly because I have three children that are picky. So I just season this with olive oil and a little salt and pepper to taste. And you guys will actually notice today, too, um, as Ann mentioned, you know, if you do have picky kids, that is one thing that, you know, you can go very basic and it's absolutely delicious. I mean, let the let people taste the food. I think sometimes we over um, season our food that we forget that food should just taste really good. But we actually have displayed up front um, is there is a uh, local um, store around here that you can actually make your own seasoning, salt free or regular. And those are just different seasonings. I think I've used that they have a grill master seasoning. Um, after I settle this and wash my hands, I'll kind of walk you through some of those, but very, very simple. Um, but you guys will notice that also Ann and I are putting all of our meat on one kebab because I think when you think chicken, you your vegetables may cook quicker than the chicken. Right. And um, so I like to make sure my chicken is 165 degrees, and I don't like burnt, um, and we don't want overcooked um, vegetables. So I'm just going to put them separately. And what do you usually cook yours in? Uh, and I also, one thing I always do is don't cook. I cook one type of meat on one kebab, so I wouldn't mix chicken and steak on the same kebab because they take uh, different lengths of time to cook. Yes, because I like my medium rare or medium, which is about 140, 135. All right. Um, and you guys will notice that we actually have two different pans. Um, and you'll see when we go out to the grill, the tips of that is you want to make sure you don't cross contaminate your raw and your cooked. So I have a red pan for all of our raw meat. And we're going to put all of our non-meat on our black pan and everything cooked on there as well. So let Ann and I finish up. We're going to just finish up assembling two of our meat. And if you guys have some great tips on different kind of kebabs that you like to make, share them with us in the comments. We'd love to kind of see what, what you use and what you do with it. Um, there's a variety of different Right. Ways. I've also done shrimp on kebabs. Oh, um, you know, like three kebabs. minutes. Yeah. It's the easiest thing ever. Um, so kebabs are a good way to get a lot of variety. If you have people that like different things, you're able to cook chicken, steak, uh, shrimp, sometimes, you know, cook something that meets everyone's interest. Let's see, I've got my 
two kebabs done. Let me just put my stuff back here real quick. Um, all right, so as you guys see, we filled up, this is all of our raw meat, so red, and that will be ready to go out to the grill. Um, second thing we're gonna do is, we gotta have some vegetables, right? So, um, Anne is going to assemble while, uh, while I make a salad. Anne's going to start assembling some veggie kebabs. As she mentioned, she makes she does those separately. What do you have in your veggie kebabs today? Um, so today we have some red peppers, some onions, uh, some zucchini. And so we're going to just do those today. You can, you know, obviously do multicolored peppers, um, you can do mushrooms. Um, I've got tomatoes. Um, it's really, you know, which vegetables you like. And I think we season these the same way with just some olive oil, uh, salt and pepper today. You have it pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple. That's right. So while Anne's doing assembling the vegetable kebabs, uh, I am going to start one of the side salads that we chose today. And, um, and for Anne and I being dietitians, we really wanted to find some real healthier alternative options for side salads. Most of the time when you go to barbecue, they tend to be more mayonnaise-based salads, potato salads, macaroni salads. Unfortunately, those can get pretty um, calorie dense. So we really wanted to show and highlight some really basic um, little side salads that don't take any time at all that can be lower in calories and, and actually be just absolutely refreshing and very simple. So what I'm gonna make today for my salad is a cucumber, tomato, red onion salad. And you just make a really basic, basic, um, actually just seasoning. I use rice wine vinegar. Um, the recipe that I'm sharing with you guys today that you'll find all the recipes at the top of uh, the video is, oh, I'm using rice wine vinegar. I like that, mixed with a little bit of Splenda, salt and pepper. But you can do rice wine vinegar, salt and pepper, anything. And there's nothing, nothing exact, a tablespoon or so. I'm using a little bit, a tablespoon of Splenda to add a little bit of sweetness with the tangy of the rice vinegar. I have some pepper, and I'm gonna come over by and I need some salt. All right, I'm gonna mix that. And it's not a lot, it's just, okay. And then, pretty simple. I've used, um, actually, grape tomatoes today. I feel like they keep, they're pretty sturdy. I think if you use a full tomato, Sometimes over time, it gets a little watery. Yeah, do you, you tend to use those too, Anne? I do, I kind of don't get it quite as mushy. Yeah, <laughs> that is quickly, as quickly. You know what, do you, um, I think you mentioned you also use tomatoes on, is it cherry tomatoes? Cherry tomatoes on kebab. You could do cherry tomatoes quickly on kebabs too. So I'm just going to put my cucumbers, actually, I need a, a different bowl. I'm going to go in the right below you. Tip for that one, a little bit more than I thought, but I'll dump it back out there. And then um, I just dice some, and you can either do it diced or really thin slices of red onion. And if you don't like red onion, you don't have to add it. You could do simple as, as tomato and a cucumber. And you think about this, this, um, has probably less than 100 calories per serving just for that salad, where I think just a tablespoon of mayonnaise is 100 calories. So just think about that. It's like that doesn't include the pasta, doesn't include the potatoes or anything else that you have as well. So I'm going to put this back in the pan. So in my little bowl. And we will set that aside. Um, 
because you do want the salt and pepper and the rice vinegar, rice wine vinegar, and the um, and the Splenda just to kind of kind of marinate together and and just be very uh, flavorful. So I'm gonna set this aside, but look. It took me less than five minutes and really to chop this up. I actually chopped the cucumbers up in fours. So I cut it in half, I leave the skin on, then I cut it again, and then I chop them up. Um, but these, this will stay in the refrigerator for at least four or, or five days, if it lasts that long. So, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then look at how many kebabs you can simply get off of, what is it, one red pepper, two zucchinis, and one onion. Right. That's, that's a lot. So um, while I get our pineapple ready, okay, I'm going to switch over to you, Anne, so you can do our next salad. Okay. So I'm going to make an orzo um, lemon feta with pine nuts salad. Orzo is great because I think a lot of times people are afraid of pasta, thinking it has too many carbs. Orzo is uh, obviously a lot lower in carbs. You're still able to get that taste and texture. Um, all of these recipes are posted with the link today. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is um, have my orzo here. We cook this ahead of time. I'm going to make the marinade first for the pasta. So I'm going to add a little um, there's salt, pepper, oregano in here. And then I have my olive oil and lemon juice. Uh, whisk that together and kind of make your dressing for the pasta. And like Mary Beth said, this is nice because it's not a mayonnaise base. Um, cuts down on the fat, but also with mayonnaise, you have to be careful when you're grilling and eating outside um, and it doesn't go bad. You know, you have to worry about that temperature with this. You don't have that concern. So whisk that together. I'm going to go ahead and add my orzo in. Coat that with that marinade that we made. Now I'm also going to, the recipe calls for a toasted pine nuts, so I have um, some pine nuts in here and I'm just going to turn this on so I can get these toasted. How long does it traditionally take to toast it in? It's pretty quick, so you shouldn't leave it. Yeah, right? No, it's very quick. You just yeah. want to toast them and just kind of um, constantly kind of Stirring them so one side doesn't get you know too dark or anything. So I'm gonna leave those to toast while I add the rest of our um, ingredients for the salad. So we need to add in um, our garlic. We're going to add in some red onion. Um, we have black olives. And then we have some um, golden raisins and um, basil that we're going to add in. And I just went ahead and chopped all this ahead of time. It's so speaking fast. Checking on these pine nuts. Give it a little bit of stir. I'm going to stir all this up in here. These are things you guys can make ahead of time, and um, I mean, and they last. A lot of things that have vegetables and um, fruit, you can keep in the refrigerator for at least five to seven days, where meat, you really should throw it out after 72 hours once it's cooked. Right. So, and then lastly, I'm adding in um, the feta. And then what's nice about this salad also is you can make it ahead of time. Um, my husband actually prefers it when it's set overnight, so it kind of soaks in the, the flavors a little bit. So this is something that you know you're going to be busy the day of. Um, you can make it the night before, and it's just as good or, or better. Um, I think it's better. It's like pasta. Let pasta sit overnight. Ooh, much better. So I'm going to let these toast a little bit before I add them in, but you can see I've mixed this all together. Um, and this makes it quick, easy, 
side to go with your, your grilling. All right, I'm going to check to see if we have any comments. Looks like we have, oh, the, um, the recipes are posted. Someone has said, I love tomatoes and cucumbers. My favorite vinegar to use is red wine vinegar. Perfect. Like I said, there's balsamic vinegar, red wine vinegar, rice wine vinegar. All those are great different options to right. really make a lower calorie salad. Without, you know, you can still eat pasta. You can still eat all those other things, but just using those fresh ingredients. Um, but yeah, check out the different salads. The orzo salad especially. I mean, it's... Looks delicious. And I'm going to add these in. There you go. And then she can put it right back in the uh, container. I think we lost the cook. We lost the cook can today. So if you want to put it, you can put it back in the container, and we'll show how. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had our nice little cook camp. For some reason we lost it. Um, all right, so as we're kind of putting that back in so we can make sure it marinates and is really good and before we go out to the grill, who doesn't love absolute grilled corn? Grilled corn is the best. The thing that I know I have a challenge with is making sure that the corn is not burnt when it comes off the grill. Best tip I ever received, and I actually received it from a chef that I worked with. He told me, put a piece of ice in it, Mary Beth. If you put a piece of ice before you wrap the corn in foil, it actually will help let that foil, uh, it will steam and not burn. So you'll see you could wrap um, corn, just one full piece of ice, and it will come out perfect. And you're going to see that when we go out to the grill. And then um, last thing we're going to make before we start, start grilling is fruit. Fruit on the grill is delicious. Um, we're going to do pineapple today. Uh, what, else, what else do you make on I do. I tend to think my, my fig tree um, has been exploding these last two weeks, so I put figs on the grill. What else have you put? Watermelon, you hear? I have not done watermelon, but I have heard that one on that. I'm going to make just a quick little um, seasoning. All it is is canola oil, even parts of canola oil and honey. And of course, I always use local honey. It's probably should just unscrew the top and <laughs> put it in there. Um, and then I throw a little cinnamon in there too, as well. And actually, you could put this on top of anything. As you notice that um, we did use a lot of canola oil or olive oil to baste our meat, our vegetables, and even our fruit uh, before we put it on the grill. Because I find the grill is really, uh, it, it's, it, it gets things way too dry. Right. So and using the olive oil, I also find it helps them slide off the kebab. Oh yeah, that's right. I have the little ones that push it off. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, but one of the things too is you need to make sure that you don't burn your food. Um, that is one one, one challenge. Um, you can throw lettuce on the grill. You could do romaine on the grill. Um, but we do recommend just put a little olive oil, canola oil. Those are the two recommend. Right. Or avocado oil. I've yeah. used before. And just basic salt and pepper can be really, really good. All right, so let me finish. Okay, right, one kebab, and I'm just gonna brush that kebab with the marinade, the cinnamon. It's just cinnamon, honey, and canola oil. And that is oh. it. So let's see. So our meal, we have kebabs, uh, meat kebabs, veggie kebabs. We have some corn. We have two different salads. And then um, the pineapple, what we're going to do now that we finish in the kitchen, we're going to head out to the grill.
four minutes. And when they're ready to come off, I just pull them off because you have such a variety of different things. So you have your steak, your chicken, your veggies, um, your pineapple. I actually have a surprise guest today because I had so many figs on my tree. I actually used the same marinade for the pineapple and did a whole entire kebab of figs. Just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and then also I had some extra baby bok choy in, in my refrigerator and I needed to cook it. So I threw those on the grill as well. And then we have our mushrooms and as well as our corn. Um, so today I really want to talk about your t safe grilling tips and tricks. First one, low and slow. I know people love some burnt meat, um, but I really recommend try not to burn your meat. Um, I preheat my grill between 350 and 375. I actually have one built into my grill. If you don't have one built into the grill, grill, no worries. If you have a charcoal grill, you could easily have one that can be placed in the middle of the grill and you know what your temperature is. The reason why I suggest low and slow is that burnt food or fat drippings and smoking actually releases chemicals to increase your cancer risk. So I always say, just make sure that you are cooking low and slow. And sometimes also think about it. If you have really burnt food, you can have chard. That's why I like doing 350, 375. It creates a really ch a little bit of a char, but it evenly cooks your food, especially marinating. We, Ann and I talked about marinating your meats, tenderizes them, just kind of keeps them nice and moist, especially if you throw them on the grill, which is a pretty dry, type of way of cooking food. So um, I do recommend that you oh, you do marinate your meat, but also cook it very low and slow. Um, we don't want to char it and then be pretty raw in the middle as well. So um, number two, keep it clean. And I say that because grilling has the risk of cross-contamination of raw meat and then cooked meat. So what my tip and trick is I have two different types of pans, so I know. I have a red pan, which I know is all my raw meat, and I have a black pan, which I know is gonna be either my vegetables or it's gonna be anything cooked. Um, what I tend to do is have a lot of food, like I got a full grill today. When I put that initial um, kebab on or meat or whatever, I immediately go in, wash it and so forth. I have actually have a timer on right now so every four minutes, I think I'm at, let me look, I am at that four minute mark. So I gotta just go ahead and make sure I flip my meat. Everything's gonna be so different in the way that it cooks too. So my next tip and trick is use a th meat thermometer. All right, this is one of my favorites. I've had this for a while. I've actually bought like three or four of them on Amazon. Um, our meat, my meat thermometer has Celsius, Fahrenheit. It actually can light up. It actually tells you where you should cook your meat. Um, I like medium rare steak. So I'm gonna pull this off about 135, 140. And for the chicken, we wanna make sure it's completely cooked, 165. For the um, vegetables, the, and the fruit, and everything else, you just got to picture what actually works best for you and what texture that you like a lot of those. I think the marinade is going to make it a little bit soft. So you just want to, you know, kind of pull it off as needed. Nothing is going to be pretty um, set standard of time. You know, everyone's very different in what they have. But, and, and last but not least, use foil, okay? I don't like cleaning the grill. I use as much foil as possible. I didn't use as probably kebabs, you don't use as much foil, but anything, especially with the mushrooms, the corn, I use foil, it keeps it moist. Remember I told you, when we packed up the corn, you put that ice in there and it steams it and it doesn't burn it. If you if you really like those grill marks, just take, the, take it out of the foil the last minute and just rotate it. Those are not gonna be such an issue. Um, but let's kind of, if I look at this, let me, let me see where my steak is at. All right, perfect. It is actually at 140, a little bit more, but I got kids, so I need to make sure it's, it's right where it needs to be. All right, my veggies, all right, those are good. Look at the 
fruit. And that can go a little bit longer. Ugh, those figs are delicious. We're gonna pull those off as well. I'm gonna put that on the red plate. Um, as I mentioned, we have surprise guests here today with some baby bok choy. I'm gonna look at my corn real quick. A lot of times I just look at it. Oh, just look, delicious. It's not, I don't like grill marks, so I'm not gonna put the grill marks on there. My kids actually won't eat it if there's grill marks. You can pull those off as well. Same thing with uh, portobello mushrooms. And I'm gonna quickly check, because after actually I put these on the hotter side just so they can stay. These are at 165. And we're gonna pull off our, our pineapple too. Oh, I lost one today. All right, look at that. Just absolutely ready for a feast. And as I said, I got, I got ton, we got tons of food just waiting to go inside, but thank you for joining me today. All right, hope you guys enjoy. And I hope some of these tips will be helpful for your next barbecue. Welcome back to the kitchen. I hope you guys enjoyed those tips and tricks. Um, and we do have a question in our chat. Um, and this one is for you. What other kind of nuts could you use if you don't like pine nuts? Um, you really can use anything but um, um, pistachios, cashews. Um, you can leave the pine nuts out if you don't like Yeah, so you have an allergy. Just like um, I sometimes have told Mary Beth, I don't put the olives in sometimes because my husband doesn't like olives. So. If you want to tweak it a little bit, it really doesn't take away much from the flavor. And honestly, I don't follow recipes that much. I'll make you know. <laughs> I just, if you don't, if I don't like golden raisins, I'll put cranberries right. in there. If you don't like black olives, you like green olives, put green olives. That's the greatest thing about some of these salads. Is there's no, the only thing you have to be exact is baking. Beyond that, kind of use your imagination, trial and error, do whatever. But um, grilling is such a good, healthy way of doing things. So we just showed you some different opportunities of how you can make it a little bit healthier versus very mayonnaise-based. Right. Like a lot of the traditional sides that you may think of, you know, the potato salad, macaroni salad, all those things are very heavy mayonnaise-based, which just adds extra calories. You have to worry about the food safety issues. So these are just some good alternatives to maybe try. And honestly, I like using the grill with, and I like to use foil because I don't like to do dishes. <laughs> and so I feel like using foil and wrapping things in foil really saves from cleaning, having to clean up a mess too, you know? So, um, well, you know, and, and we try to really show you different things to include fruits and vegetables and starch and even different meats and steaks. Most people think, oh, I shouldn't eat everything. It's not about perfection. No. It's about balance. So. We really wanted people to understand you could do a variety of things. I think I paid less than $50 for all these ingredients that would feed at least a party of 10. So it, it's very cost effective. It's not too expensive to get really fresh, just buy in season. And I think that's the, that's the key. Corn is in season right now, pineapple, all these, these are great. They just make some really good um, barbecue. And especially if you do a barbecue bash, who doesn't like hanging outside, right? right? Now, I think outside tends to be our choice anyways when we do things. Um, and if you don't have a grill and, or if it's too cold outside, you can do exactly the same thing. Have a grill indoors and make the same thing too. So um, before we go, I wanted to once again kind of just talk about um, Fresh Jacks. They are the ones locally, local store around here that does a variety of different rubs and seasonings, salt-free with salt. That are great. They have some grilling ones. They have some ones that are Cajun. Um, I think variety. They can even do a variety of different ones that you can kind of make yourself. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just a variety of different kind of things. But before we go, I definitely want to just kind of give you guys um, a little bit our viewers' resource and let you know about our healthy living centers. It's a great resource to the community. They have um, wellness coaches, RN wellness coaches. Uh, they do biometric screenings, 
um, as well as coaching sessions and virtual classes. So make sure you check that out. Um, they're there to help you through your well-being journey. And I think one thing I always tell people is people don't realize every single person's on their own well-being journey, no matter what stage you're at. So why not let someone assist and kind of help you find just those little things with you in the driver's seat. So thanks for joining us today. Any closing? And thanks for joining. Yeah. Hopefully you got some good tips, tricks, maybe some new recipes to try. And I think we're ready to dig in, right? <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. We'll see you next time.